and that holds up everything. Um, so no, absolutely, we're no different from the US uh, in that respect. Um, uh, the, we need more police, we need more police resources. Second question uh, about the law. The, there is no law in, Eng in the United Kingdom about any of this. The filtering that is done uh, and, and provided on the mobile phone networks and on the internet is all entirely voluntary. The industry agree to do it. This is part of our self-regulatory approach. Like Margaret said, uh, we try to avoid making laws. Now, that doesn't work in every country. In some countries, and the US is in fact a, a good example of this, basically, unless the law requires you to do something, you don't do it. Um, I'm not saying that's true across, uh, across the board, but in the UK, we have a different political tradition, a different political culture, and a different history, and self-regulation can work. Um, can you opt out? Uh, well, the short answer is really no, because it's on every mobile phone device. What you can do, however, is if you prove that you're an adult by going through an age verification mechanism, you can get the bar on pornography and the bar on gambling and the bar on dating sites uh, lifted. So you can get access to pornography, you can get access to gambling, you can get access to dating services, uh, but you, have, you can only do that if you prove that you are an adult, that the user of the device is an adult. But it's got nothing whatsoever to do with, uh, uh, with the law. Finally and quickly to the, the last question. You know, we had to go through a, big, a, a learning curve, you know. Nobody anticipated the way the internet was going to go initially. Mm -hmm. And it was only really because the media really jumped on these cases early on when they first started to happen, particularly the child sex abuse cases and the child pornography cases. The British media went absolutely berserk, front page stories, day after day. Uh, and, and thanks to pressure from politicians like Margaret uh, in Parliament, the government then set up this quite complicated and now very substantial um, child protection self-regulatory body, really, that we've got in, in the United Kingdom. But uh, if you want to learn lessons on how not to do it, come to England. We've got loads that we can, <laughs> we can, we can pass on. Um, I'll just echo that last point. I, I just wanted to pick up the point about uh, policing as well. Um, as John said, the resources are woeful, but I think we ha have to acknowledge, or we have acknowledged, that there will never be enough police to police all of this because of the exponential growth. Uh, there, and that, um, you know, child sex abusers will always find new ways of doing this uh, and that the technology will always be faster as well. And I always you know, liken it to Keystone Cops, once again, in the same way as legislation is after the event. We've got Keystone Cops with truncheons, you know, I don't know, hitting laptops or something. It's not quite <laughs> as blunt as that, but it's, it's not far off. And that is why we um, have said, and this, that's why I come back to the multi-stakeholder issue, we we have to build in the prevention into the technology but we also have to have industry as part of the policing mechanism and I, all, I kind of liken it to slapping a sheriff's badge onto Google or somebody because we can never um, move technology or, or, or do the forensics on the technology as well as the guys that are designing the technology uh, so we have to have industry policing this new world, uh, the old models of policing don't work, and that's, that applies across the whole spectrum of e-crime, actually. Uh, and just to, to come back to the point about um, what's happening in Indi India, uh, we, out, out with the conference, the UK parliamentarians have been meeting with a number of your, uh, your IT industry movers and shakers. And what's clear is partly as a result of the economic global downturn, but there is going to be a greater focus on the domestic market. And that looks like you are going to be finding that not only are the, you know, is the hardware going to be out there, the software is going to be out there, and I think internet penetration is going to grow exponentially. So I don't think you need to learn any lessons from us. You're going to jump over us and, and, and find some of the problems, and I hope with us some of the solutions as well. Yeah, well, um, I think, well, it, there's some really interesting and, and very important discussions going on here. And I do think, of course, that filtering and, and uh, also involving uh, industry as a responsible 
developers here is, is a very important issue. But on the other hand, I also think that we sometimes forget that it's also about bringing up our children. I mean, bringing up our children digitally. Uh, it's, it's another. It's of course, it's a difficult thing to discuss while when we're discussing child pornography. But risks are also uh, all the other kinds of, of risks. And I mean, the other side of this is that parents have to be responsible parents that bring up their children to behave uh, in a sensible way when they're using digital media. Because you can't actually prevent everything by using filters or, uh, or developing specific technologies and so on. So I think that's very important. And I think that's one of the part of the programs that I actually going on within Safe for Internet programs. Safe for Internet Day, of course, including the schools, the parents, and, and, and so on, that there are a lot of very uh, important things going on here. So I think that progress is being made, but it's difficult, of course. And it's perhaps becoming more and more difficult to bring up your children. And I think also in regard of the last question uh, in respect of uh, India, uh, I also do think that you are jumping Western countries. And I also want to emphasize the fact that, I, of course, part of the experiences that developed countries have with the, the integration and, and the consequences of digital media can be somehow learned from. But on the other hand, there are so many different uh, aspects of culture and, and diversity that do not at all, uh, they're not at all uh, the same as we have experienced, for instance, in Denmark. So I think it's very important to, to analyze what's going on and how digital media are integrated in the local context, as I said. I think it's, we mustn't forget that. Thank you very much. I'm afraid, unfortunately, we're going to have to end there. We're already running rather over time, although it would be, I think there's a lot to discuss, and I hope we can um, carry on discussing us amongst ourselves over the next few days. So there's some really important issues um, raised today. So thank you very much to all our panelists and uh, to all of you for um, participating. Um, so thank you and enjoy your lunch. Oh, and sorry, one announcement to anyone staying in the Green Park Hotel. Uh, there's now a shuttle service uh, in the morning and the evening. Uh, the morning leaving at 7.45 and one at 8 o'clock. And in the evening leaving here at 18.15 and 18.30. So that's the Green Park Hotel. <laughs>